Have you ever wondered how Uranus, the seventh planet from the Sun, manages to keep its rings in place? Unlike Saturn, which has a magnificent ring system that spans hundreds of thousands of kilometers, Uranus has a much smaller and fainter set of rings that are only a few kilometers wide. How do these rings survive the harsh environment of the outer solar system, where they are constantly bombarded by dust and radiation? And what role do Uranus's 27 moons play in shaping and regulating the rings? In this video, we will explore the latest research on Uranus's rings and moons based on a new paper by Mark Showalter and Jack Lissauer, who are planetary scientists at the SETI Institute and NASA Ames Research Center, respectively. We will learn how the largest of Uranus's moons are able to keep the planet's stunted rings in check by ejecting dust out of the system through gravitational resonances. We will also discover how the rings are being replenished by impacts and outgassing on the moons. So, let's get started. Uranus has 13 known rings, which are named after letters of the Greek alphabet. The most prominent ring is the Epsilon ring, which is about 100 kilometers wide and lies at a distance of about 51,000 kilometers from Uranus's center. The other rings are much narrower and closer to the planet, ranging from 2 to 40 kilometers in width and from 38,000 to 50,000 kilometers in distance. The rings are composed mainly of dark and icy particles, ranging from dust-sized to boulder-sized. But how do these rings stay in place? One might expect that over time, the dust particles would spread out and dissipate due to collisions, radiation pressure, or magnetic forces. However, this is not what happens. Instead, the rings are confined by the gravitational influence of some of Uranus's largest moons, such as Titania, Oberon, Umbriel, and Ariel. These moons act as shepherds for the rings by perturbing the orbits of dust particles through gravitational resonances, which occur when two orbiting bodies have a simple ratio between their orbital periods. For example, if one body orbits twice as fast as another body, they have a two to one resonance. And usually when two bodies are in resonance, they exert periodic gravitational forces on each other that can alter their orbits. In some cases, these forces can increase or decrease the eccentricity or inclination of an orbit, making it more oval-shaped or tilted. In other cases, these forces can cause an orbit to become unstable and cross another orbit, leading to collisions or ejections. Using computer simulations, Showalter and Liesauer showed that many of Uranus's rings are affected by different resonances with its moons. For example, the Epsilon ring is in a 3 to 2 resonance with Titania, meaning that Titania orbits three times for every two orbits of the Epsilon ring. This resonance causes the Epsilon ring to have a high eccentricity of about 0.01, making it slightly oval-shaped. The other rings are also influenced by resonances with other moons, such as Umbriel, Ariel, or Miranda. These resonances have two effects on the rings. One is to confine them within narrow boundaries by preventing them from spreading out too much, the other is to eject dust particles out of the system by making them collide with the moons or escape from their orbits. This means that the rings are constantly losing material due to resonances. But how do they get replenished? This is where another source of ring material comes into play, impacts and outgassing on the moons. Showalter and Lissauer suggested that Uranus's rings are being replenished by impacts and outgassing on its moons. Impacts occur when asteroids or comets strike the surface of a moon, creating craters and ejecting debris into space. Outgassing occurs when volatile substances such as water ice or organic molecules escape from cracks or vents on a moon's surface or interior due to heating or pressure. There is some evidence for both processes happening on Uranus's moons. For example, some of Uranus's moons have been detected to have water ice on their surfaces, which could indicate that they have subsurface oceans or reservoirs that can release water vapor into space through outgassing. And some other moons also have organic molecules on their surfaces, which could indicate that they have some form of primitive life or prebiotic chemistry that can produce organic compounds through outgassing. Moreover, some moons have been observed to have dust plumes or jets coming from their surfaces 
which could indicate that they are active and undergoing impacts or outgassing. These processes create fresh ring material that can counterbalance the loss due to resonances. The new material can either join the existing rings or form new ones. For example, Showalter and Lissauer propose that the Zeta ring, which is the outermost and faintest of Uranus's rings, was formed by impacts on Portia, one of Uranus's small inner moons. They also suggested that the ETA ring, which is the second outermost and also very faint, was formed by outgassing on Mab, another small inner moon. By comparing the mass and composition of the rings and the moons, Showalter and Lissauer estimated that the rings are being replenished at a rate of about 10 kilograms per second. This means that the rings are relatively young and dynamic, and that they reflect the current activity of Uranus's moons. The new paper by Showalter and Lissauer sheds light on the origin and evolution of Uranus's rings and moons, as well as their interactions with each other and with the planet. By showing how the moons confine and replenish the rings through resonances, impacts, and outgassing, the paper reveals how complex and diverse Uranus's ring system is. It also suggests that these rings and moons are not static or isolated, but rather dynamic and connected. The paper also has implications for studying other ring systems in the solar system, such as Saturn's or Jupiter's. By comparing Uranus's rings with those of other planets, we can learn more about how different factors such as distance from the sun, number and size of moons, orbital tilt, magnetic field, or atmospheric drag affect the formation and stability of rings. We can also test our theories and models of ring dynamics and evolution against different scenarios and observations. However, the paper also has some limitations and uncertainties that need to be addressed in future research. For one thing, the paper relies on assumptions and simplifications that may not fully capture the reality of Uranus's rings and moons. For example, the paper assumes that the rings are composed of spherical particles with uniform size and density, which may not be true in reality. It also ignores some effects that may influence the rings, such as radiation pressure, magnetic forces, or atmospheric drag. Moreover, it does not account for some unknown factors that may affect the rings, such as possible undiscovered moons or ringlets. Another limitation of the paper is that it is based on limited data and observations of Uranus's rings and moons. Most of our knowledge about Uranus's rings comes from a single flyby by Voyager 2 in 1986, which only provided a brief glimpse of the system. Since then, we have only been able to observe Uranus's rings from Earth or from space telescopes such as Hubble and James Webb, which have limited resolution and coverage. Therefore, we need more direct and detailed measurements of Uranus's rings and moons to verify and refine our understanding of them. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about Uranus's fascinating ring system. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And if you have any questions or comments about this topic, please leave them below. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching.